Welcome to Back to the Father, a show about the journey of life focused on our final end, which is God himself, our loving Father. And now here's your host, Dave Palmer. And welcome everybody to this edition of Back to the Father here on the Guadalupe Radio Network uh, social media pages. And uh, let me kind of get the elephant in the room out of the way right away. I'm wearing a Santa cap. I know that. And uh, I was just thinking about this. You know, this, this program is an hour long and... We start off a little nutty, we end nutty, and then in the middle we get very serious, okay? <laughs> Pretty much how it goes, because, hey, Thomistic philosophy, you got to hand it. I mean, it's not serious necessarily, but it can get a little deep in uh, the topic, so we like to kind of start off on a lighter note, and we wear hats, and that's kind of how we show our, our nuttiness, is uh, we wear hats. And that was all <laughs> Sissel's fault, because she's the one that first started wearing all these hats, and uh, I only wear my hat for the very beginning. I love Christmas. I love the Advent season. Uh, This is my favorite time of the year as we're leading up to Advent, and I just get the warm fuzzies, and so... Hey, sorry. Guilty as charged. I'm excited about Christmas. Okay, so I'm going to take my hat off, my cap or whatever, and then introduce Cecil Anderson. She's our North Texas assistant and uh, one of the key team players of Back to the Father. So, Cecil, how are you doing? Good to see you. Nice hat. Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing pretty well. I kind of look like a shadowy figure that hasn't been unlocked in a video game yet because I don't know why. I'm not getting much light even though I'm right by a window. But, yes, I am wearing this <laughs> lovely little pillbox hat. Uh, I think I've worn a red one of these before. It's kind of like not a once. funeral hat. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, like a, like Whose a funeral am I going ber- to? bereavement. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what? I, I must say, and this is, uh, I'm so I, I'm glad you said that. Uh, our dear friend Bill Button. Yes. Uh, his funeral, well, I had to miss, and it's today uh, at two at, at uh, I think it was at one thirty, and so maybe it's appropriate. Maybe that's why that's that uh, Sissa wore that. So I was not able to get there because we had the the obligation of the live show. But may God rest his soul. One of the holiest people I've ever known in my life. But anyways, I interrupt, so go ahead. No, that's okay. Yeah, it kind of completes the full look. Our offices have been pretty cold the last few weeks, so I've taken to wearing this kind of obnoxious uh, cheetah jacket. So I feel like I look like a rich grandma. And I have decided to just fully embrace Um, that role. A bereaving rich (laughs) grandma, right? Uh, All right, and to my right, we have uh, Jonathan von Weber-Hansberg, who is... Not with Sam Cavana, because Sam uh, was a little too tied up, too many things going on this week, and uh, which is perfectly understandable. But uh, he's not here, but Jonathan is. Good to see you. Kind of hunting cap look there today? Mm-hmm. Kind of. Oh, no, this is my state guard ha- cap. A state guard? So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good. Good. A little, you know, patriotism uh, yeah. thrown in there. All right. <laughs> uh, all right, Jonathan, good to see you. And uh, Jonathan, I think he promises he will have a trivia question at the end of the show, right? <laughs> of course. I always okay. do. He always does. <laughs> it's not always planned. And then... Uh, no introduction would be complete if we didn't introduce Diane Xavier, uh, who is our intrepid board op, and she's also taking calls. How long is it since we, since we had a call? Well, last two weeks we minute. had an international outgoing call where yes, we uh, had uh, Josephine and Tony on from Australia. We don't have anything like that planned, but if you want to call in, in fact, we have a new phone system over to my left. I see when the calls come in. Uh, if you're watching on our social media platforms, you want to call in, comment, uh, we'd love to hear from you. 877-757-9424, 877-757-9424. We'll put you on the air right away. We have trivia at the end. We have a way a day before that. And then we have a teaching on the Summa in between. Today, it's very exciting. We're going to be talking about a provocative question uh, that I would like to ask everybody. Is the natural law dead? Okay. That's why I'm wearing the hat. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> you didn't even go. know you were doing that. I didn't even know but, I was uh, doing that. But the funeral for the natural law. Yes. Now, uh, I'll get into a little bit more of that. Uh, what would you say? Your, your, how would you answer that? The natural law is dead in today's world and culture, true or false? Are we saying only in today's culture? Yeah. Yeah. Like today in 2021, is natural law dead? I thought we were talking about just like in general, have we killed it and it no longer exists? And I was <laughs> yeah. going to say no. Um, well... I would say from the loudest crowds, it is. I don't think it's dead, though, because I think there's still a good number of people who okay. see it. I just think that there's a lot of people who have a lot of a big, large platform yeah. who can talk about, like, you know, immoral things. Like, just it's, yeah, it's becoming more popular, but I wouldn't say that it's dead. All right. All right. Good answer. Jonathan, do you want to weigh in before we can dig into the Aquinas today? I'd say it's definitely dying. Uh, okay. I wouldn't say completely dead, but it's pretty close. <laughs> All right. 
And I, and I will say <clears throat> that it's impossible for the natural law to die. Okay. That was a trick question. <laughs> Come on, go. Well, there we go. Uh, I'll, I'll, End of the show. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Answer the question. Right next time. You've been voted off the island. Uh, okay, so we'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, before that, we have some interesting um, away a day uh, things to share with. Uh, and first of all, let me let me start with prayer. This is the same prayer as last week, but it's short, it's concise, and it's really nice. So, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The prayer of Saint Thomas Aquinas. Grant me, O Lord my God, a mind to know you, a heart to seek you, wisdom to find you, conduct pleasing to you, faithful perseverance in waiting for you, and a hope of finally embracing you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. A way a day is just a thing where you, during the course of your week, you notice something. You know, we, we notice a thousand things, but you take notice of it. And not only say, oh, look at that, that's a butterfly or a cloud or a, a shrub, but you connect it to God somehow, connect it to divine providence, and it really gives you a sense that God's in control, God knows what he's doing, and he's got all this figured out. So I've got a couple, and then Jonathan has a fascinating story that he's going to tell us about it's something that happened to him. It's a very good and I story. have And I have a picture uh, of that uh, of, of, of that actual scene, okay, that I'm going to share with everybody oh. as well. So I have not seen it. So. Uh, first of all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I had a photographer go over there and yeah, uh, you're just hiding photo- yeah, yeah. Yeah. photograph you, okay? So Jonathan will tell the story, and then I'll, I'll show you the picture from it. But uh, <laughs> this is a picture that I took right outside our office, uh, walking into work the other day. And it struck me that these little bumblebees uh, are, are carrying out their mission that God you know, assigned to them, so to speak, perfectly because they're 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 doing their pollination. They're they're collecting nectar and uh, pollen. And uh, do y'all know what the there, there's a lot of things that the the bees do with the the nectar and the pollen? Like, what's the purpose? Why they they collect it? Or to give us uh, honey? Uh, that's one of them. Ding ding ding. <laughs> yeah, and you know it takes like a thousand bees to get even like a twelve ounce thing of honey. I mean, it takes a lot of them. So they. Uh, one ever the one little bee only gives us a little bit, you know. Wow, my grandparents accidentally well, they managed to end up with a bunch of honeybees inside the walls of their home, Ooh. and we ended up with quite a bit of honey, so there must have been a lot of bees there. Then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, hey, wait, so you collected your own honey, yeah, yeah. out of the walls, <laughs> yes, out Just of crack the crack a hole in the wall, and grab it. No, they had to like redo the whole thing, it was quite it was pretty funny. <laughs> Why do you guys have store crazy <laughs> stories for everything that I bring up? Uh, all right, so the bees collect honey uh, to, to feed. They, I mean, the bees collect, the bees collect pollen and uh, nectar uh, to feed themselves. Okay. okay. They also bring it back to feed the little baby bees, the little little, little baby, little baby bees. bees. Okay. And of course, they give us honey, and they're also carrying out the pollination process. And so it's kind of like f- uh, a blessing for you know a four times blessing. Uh, the other cool thing about bees is bees are the only insects that provide food for us. Unless you're eating them, like if you eat an insect, like some people. Yeah, fried eat... grasshoppers are a thing. Yeah, but That's as far weird. as like making something that for we us. eat, the the bee is the only insect. Huh. Okay, That's I mean, they're... Bees. yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We appreciate that. All right, uh, next one. I don't know if I shared this with you oh. or not, Cecil. I'm about to. Okay, do you think that all snakes are bad or? Uh, aggressive or, uh, you know, a lot of people think like every snake you see, you just got to kill it. Right. A lot of people out there, which really kind of angers me. I just walk away. (laughs) Okay. This little guy is called a rough earth snake. I used to play with those all the time when I was younger. They are the cutest little, I mean, I've never, I've never even seen one open its mouth. They, they don't bite. They don't threaten. They don't even hiss. They, you know, a lot, a lot of, Snakes have defense mechanisms like the cotton mouth will open its mouth and hold its ground, or the hognose snake will play dead, or you know some of them hiss or rattle. And this one, it, it, its only defense mechanism is that it's cute. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> you don't want to kill it. <laughs> no, and they're so they're so sweet. So I, I, I think similar to the garden snakes. Yeah, so, similar. A lot so smaller, like, I think. Are they you know? actually? Got, okay, like, yeah. The garter snakes tend to be more like green with like a, a stripe down oh, the middle yeah, of it or right. something. They're more well. colorful. Don't these burrow too? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I heard they would burn on the ground. Yeah, maybe in the grass. That but, looks uh, like um, a giant worm. It does. <laughs> That's all it so, so everybody who thinks that all snakes are bad and they're all aggressive and they're mean and they're venomous and all that, but uh, you've no, oh, you're getting, you're getting ahead of yourself. No, there, you're, so. no one else is seeing that. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Nobody else does. Okay, don't no, let no, John, no. Don't, don't let Jonathan see I that one. Okay, Jonathan. so okay. all right now Jonathan has a way a day story oh, oh, uh, that he's going to tell. Then I got the picture of uh, of, of how it, how it came down. 
All right. Okay, so have you seen the picture yet? <laughs> you cheated, didn't you? <laughs> I know you did. See, that's the thing. We can't allow no, him. No, it was the exact opposite. We, we can't allow him to move ahead on these, uh, yeah, these graphics. So. Yeah, okay. Just know, when you see the picture, the picture is the exact opposite of what was happening. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, tell so, the story. All right, tell the story, we'll Jonathan. Reveal. All right, so um, about a week ago, I decided that I wanted to get some larger chickens, the Wyando chickens, the big, you know, big hens. So I found this lady on Craigslist, and she sold me a couple chickens. Now, about a week after that, I thought, you know, these, these are cool chickens. I think it, I'd be cool you know, with getting some more. So the lady says that she's out of town this week and that I can just leave the money under the mat and go grab a couple hens and that'll be cool. So I head out after school. It's about 7 p.m. So it's getting kind of dark. I go down there and so all the hens are out and I have to herd them into the hen house to be able to catch them. So as I'm doing this, the big, big rooster, you know, he's like 10 pounds, really tall. He's not happy about it. He's crowing. He's kind of rooster. I mean, a big rooster. I know. Big. big. That's he's, a. He's kind of chasing after me a little bit. You know, he's just kind of flaring up and showing. You know, he's not showing happy protectiveness. Them, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so eventually, I get the hens into the hen house and I close the door behind me. And then as soon as I do that, I'm like, "No, you idiot!" She told me that the hen house locks from the outside. So I heard it click. And I look back and I try to open the door and I'm locked into the, in the hen house. So I kind of <laughs> never, never a good thing. I know. I took a minute and I was like, "Okay, hold on." So it's about 7, 7.30 p.m. at this point. I'm alone. The lady is not home. I'm just locked in this random lady's hen house <laughs> with, like, 20 hens and a rooster who's, like, attacking the, the walls this outside. This only I happen see, to you, John. I see the headline. Teenager ma- uh, pecked to death by a <laughs> massive know. hen. But, but, so, but, eat, but eats eggs until... Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, there were eggs in there. So um, I, I remember the lady told me that if you... She once had to crawl out of the... Uh, the little tiny hen door, you know, it's like a little doggy door, but for hens. So I thought, okay, maybe I can try that. So I open the little hen door, and all the hens pour out, and then the rooster comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so done with one problem, but in comes another one. In so, comes another problem. So he's okay. just furious at this point because the, the the hens have been clucking like they were scared that I was in there, and he was attacking the walls from the outside. Now he comes in, and he's you know like doing, hopping on one foot, his wings are out, his you know neck oh is all puffed gosh. out, and he starts attacking my legs. He cut my legs. He cut my hands. And I didn't want to hurt him because he's, you know, this expensive, you know, big rooster this lady has. And I, I like that you still ha- were, like, caring <laughs> yeah. about the preservation of this yeah. attacking Why would I hurt angry... a rooster? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. attacking you. Not that I would go out of my way to hurt something, but <laughs> I would have probably been, like, at that point, like, knee-jerk reaction. See, the SPCC, SPCA is on the line, so, so they want to talk to you. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's advocating so, cruelty to roosters. No, no I, I understand. <laughs> you got you to defend yourself. My fight-or-flight thing yeah. would have been on. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anyways, uh, well, so then you, uh, you're in the... Hen house I, with a rooster, yeah, and so, he's attacking you. Yeah, and I'm trying to put... Eventually, I'm able to kind of, like, shove him back out of the hole again. <laughs> and then uh, I close the door. I try to figure... It, I, I try to lift up the latch or the feather from the outside, but it didn't work. But after about 10 minutes of just waiting and thinking about what I should do, I just open the hen, hen door again, the rooster's gone. I just kind of crawl out and run away. <laughs> I got the hens, though. I, I, wish, I, I wish somebody had videotaped that. Well, uh, I, I, okay, I so wish there, you had a camera So here's the picture uh, from that scene when uh. Jonathan was chasing after the, uh, the rooster. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's uh, quite a scene. Man. That looks like that looks like that is a ten pound. He, uh, yeah, that's, that's a yeah, big that's a ten, rooster. Ten rooster. Yeah, he's going yeah. after him with a hatchet. Rooster. Okay. All right. Thanks for that story. Oh yeah, sure. And do. thanks everybody <laughs> for uh, watching. I wonder if there's anybody out there that uh, will ever share with us their own away a day. Now the Ooh, whole point cool. is, and he didn't connect it with God necessarily. But oh, actually, I could actually. Than, yeah. Who um, knows? Well, just the the rooster. I was actually, I'd say, I, I respected the rooster and how just absolutely determined he was to kill me. Because he, he, I mean, nothing I did scared me. I'm this, you know, big, I was shouting, I was jumping, and he was just completely determined to protect the hens no matter what. I mean, he would have gotten in front of the Every, 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 um, you know, wife and child would like to have a dad like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, somebody that, hey, I mean, granted, you were, you disrupted their home. Exactly. I I was stealing his wives. And and you were going to (laughs) take two of them to basically eat, right? I well, mean, no, I'm going to, uh, for eggs. Oh, for eggs. But okay, I mean, yes, take their eggs. he's concerned. <laughs> okay, yeah, so he, I mean, yeah, God has God instilled in these creatures uh, a way of giving us an example uh, of, and, and I wonder if he knew it was during the year of St. Joseph, that <laughs> yeah. rooster. I mean, <laughs> being Clearly. a... Yeah. So all you dads out there, be more like roosters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, and my, my connection with the snake was that God wants us to know that the creature, all creatures are good. Snakes are good, so he gives us this little innocent little fuzzy buzzy uh, snake <laughs> that nobody could possibly hate a rough earth snake because they're so cool all right let's move on to the um <clears throat> the now what about what happened to your intro for the way a day did you guys ever produce that oh or? well so well we were gonna 
make the updated one last week, but uh, we didn't have time. And then Sam's okay. not here this week, so we'll, we'll right. get it. We'll get it sometime. <laughs> All right, keep punting it down the road, right? All <laughs> yeah. right. So the topic on the show today, as far as St. Thomas Aquinas, is is the natural law dead? All right, and so we are going to discuss that. We already discussed it a little bit, and I. Uh, I'm reminded of this gentleman, who I, I call him gentleman, uh, German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who famously said, God is dead. Are you all aware of that quote? Mm -hmm. uh, Friedrich Nietzsche died in mm -hmm. 1900, uh, basically went insane at the end of his life. And this is the actual quote from uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. He said, and, and he actually referred to this in, in a number of his writings he said, God is dead, but given the way of man, there may still be caves for thousands of years in which his shadow will be shown, and we we still have to vanquish his shadow too. So basically, Nietzsche is taking wow. it upon himself to you know, kill God, and he basically thought sure. God is no longer... <laughs> God is no longer really relevant uh, to the world, so he's been killed, he's dead, and we need to vanquish all, you know, remembrances of him, which is interesting because I think uh, uh, anybody with half a brain that hears the, the saying God is dead will laugh because they know God can't be dead. God is existence himself, itself, right? God is truth. God is, is everything. Without God, nothing in the world can be held together. Uh, and so uh, I would I, I say that because it leads into the fact, you know, is natural law dead? And a quick review of the four kinds of law and what we have. We have the eternal law, natural law, divine law, and human law. Eternal law is everything that's true. Okay, so if you say something is true, it's part of the eternal law. Two plus two is four. Birds fly. You know, roosters uh, attack people. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the eternal law, yeah. <laughs> Which is actually a good example. I'll give you a couple of uh, other examples here in a moment as well. All right, uh, divine law. Do you remember what that is? How how divine law is different from natural law and human law and all that? Is it the law that's been God has like directly given to us, like the Ten Commandments? <clears throat> yeah, I, well, like yeah. that we not that we can come because like we can know that like if I without having like laws saying murder is wrong, I should know like inherently that like. Yeah. Yeah, that's more natural law. Oh. Isn't yeah. it stuff that we can't we can't know naturally? That's, that's, yeah. that's what I was trying yeah. to say. That's what I was leading Yeah, up you to. were starting yeah. off right, and then it went a little... Yeah, you, exactly. Mm -hmm. Divine law is the church saying um, that, uh, um, let's see, transubstantiation, that, that when the, the priest consecrate the Eucharist, uh, it turns into the body and blood of Jesus. There's no way we, we would figure that out. But yeah. the church tells us that, so we accept it on faith because we trust um, God teaching through the church. Uh, that there, there's a trinity. That's that's divine law, because there's no way we can figure that out on our own. We're, we're given some truths, the fact that there's there's purgatory. Okay, there's no way we can prove that, and uh, even that there's a heaven or a hell, we can't prove that either. But uh, there's angels, okay? The, the fact that there's angels, that's divine law. There, we, don't, we just have to take that on faith, right? Uh, <clears throat> human law, we talked about last week, the application of the other laws. But natural law is, yeah, that's what's instilled in our, our heart. And so there's a, a, here's, a, here's a quote from the Summa, and he's referring to a, a gloss or a, like a commentary on Romans 2.14, where St. Paul says, When the Gentiles who have not the law do by nature those things that are of the law, uh, and then somebody commented and said, although they have no written law, yet they have the natural law, whereby each one knows and is conscious of what is good and what is evil. Okay, so just a, an inherent sense of knowing what's, good, what's right and what's wrong instilled in the human person. Okay, so I'll show you a, a few images and ask you a question. So here's uh, the first one that I think uh, you had up there. This is kind of a, I don't I think this was a, like like a like an actress. I mean, this didn't really happen, mm -hmm. but it's a little kid standing on a, a railroad track. Okay, so my question is, if you came across the scene, and the let's just say you also heard a, a train, you know, <laughs> sound dramatic, coming, right? Yeah, let's make it more dramatic. Or even if you didn't, I mean, for a kid a kid on a railroad track, do you think that somebody has to like? Across the board, every single person knows what to do in this situation. Yeah. I mean, is that, do we have to like, like look at the catechism <laughs> no. or do we have to call our mom and, hey, mom, I'm in this sticky situation. There's a kid in a railroad track. Okay. So would that be natural law? I mean, is it just like, yeah. of course. Yeah. It's, 
And even if somebody, but but there, I mean, somebody may say, "Gosh, if I if I you know go and touch this kid, it might be a, a setup, or I might be a trap, or I'm going to mm-hmm. get sued." Or so there might be some reasons why they fight against natural mm-hmm. law, right? But natural law would tell you that you need to do something, yeah, right. So that that's that's I think that would be an example of natural law. Here's a, here's another one, okay? Uh, a homeless person sign that says help. I think there's a lot of reasons why people say I don't help the homeless, mostly because we think, you know, we don't know what they're going to do with it. You know, we oh, the government's going to take care of them, and not everybody would help the person. But don't you think natural law would say we at least have a sense that I, I, I probably need to do something, yeah. you yeah. know? Don't you Absolutely. think so? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Absolutely. natural law. Uh, now, here's another one uh, that I, I think would fall into, under natural law. Uh, and, and, and it, again, also shows how twisted our culture has become because— the average person, including myself, if I saw this, you're like, w- oh would, my god! I, 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 are you on the picture with a hitchhiker? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think most people would say, sorry. I mean, I'm driving by, especially maybe probably females. I mean, yeah. and I think for to, to some degree, rightly so. Mm-hmm. But when you say natural law would say, yeah, I, I'd like to, I want to help it him. It is asking. Mm-hmm. There's someone asking for help, and it, it's hard. It's hard. I always am like, oh, please be safe every time I pass someone by and like say a prayer for them because yeah. I don't know, you know, what that situation is. I'm like, I can't. Like my mother would literally throw a stone from heaven and you know hurt me if yeah. I did pick up a male hitchhiker on my own. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, I saw, I, and and this is also kind of an interesting moral dilemma because. I, 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 back in my single days, you know, when I didn't have as many responsibilities, I, I, I never actually did this, but I thought like, you know, what if I just pick them up and mm. the worst thing that can happen is they kill me. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, but, but wouldn't yeah. God smile upon that? I mean, or is what God say? You, you idiot. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think right now it may be, you know, with me having kids and a wife, you know, more yeah. responsibilities. It, and I don't know, does it matter? I mean, or do you just say, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to pick him up. And if this guy kills me or, you know, does at something. At least tries to hurt you. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know. But I, but I think at least natural law says that first impulse we have is to help them. You know, that we, we want we want to help that person, but then all the the, the other things come in, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Can you think yeah. of any other examples of what might fall under natural law? I mean, it could I've, be, uh, I mean, sometimes that you see like a, there are people whose cars have broken down in a parking lot on the side mm-hmm. of the road and they're kind of, yeah. you know, just down there kind of looking just like they don't know what to do. You might want to stop by and help them, but yeah. you can't for whatever reason. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Someone's car breaking down. I remember one time in front of my sister, my mom, and I, a, a grandma and her grandchildren, their car broke down, and she was trying to get it into a parking lot. And of course, no one's stopping their car to let us get this yeah. thing. And my sister and I, who are, by the way, not really great at pushing cars, we're trying. <laughs> oh, they're trying our best to push these cars in our you, church clothes. You need like, to do heels. better. Oh, yeah, yeah um, but yeah, there's lots of circumstances I think where we see even if it's just opening up a door for someone who has their hands full or helping them like cr- let them go first, corral. Like you know, there's all sorts of things I think where we have this thing of like that person feel like they could use some help yeah you know but it also shows you how kind of twisted and uh kind of jaded our culture is is that i think in all these cases a lot of people would just say like i'm not getting involved mm-hmm. yeah. you hear these cases sometimes of where like uh, uh somebody's getting um, you know uh, assaulted or a woman's getting raped and that and, and people are, are just kind of walking by they're not doing anything and i, I would say they're all violating natural law but mm-hmm. they're all just like I'm not getting involved because I know this. I, I, I don't want to, you know, get questioned by the police and, you know, mm-hmm. and then maybe they, maybe I'm going to get in trouble. They're going to think it's me. And, you know, I, I just think, uh, but natural law would say, you know, just get, get involved and do something. All right. So a couple of quotes uh, from the Summa. And here's the first one. Um, he says, law being a rule and measure can be in a person in two ways. In one way, as in him that rules and measures, in another way, as in that which is ruled and measured, since a thing is ruled and measured insofar as it partakes of the rule or measure. Okay, everybody get that? Lots of rule and measure. rule and measure. Wherefore, since, since all things subject to divine providence are ruled and measured <laughs> <laughs> by the eternal law, it is evident that all things partake somewhat of the eternal law, insofar as namely from its being imprinted on them, they derive their respective inclinations to their proper acts and acts and ends. Okay, so here, here's what I think that he means by this, is that we see all around us things that are just carrying out their activities, their actions, 
in a very orderly fashion, and they're just doing it, right? Here, here, here's an example. First slide here is um, a bird building a nest. You know, it's just, it's carrying out the eternal law. It's not thinking about it. It's just like, you know, a bird builds a nest, you know, and it just, it just kind of does it, right? <laughs> uh, another one, uh, you know, beavers building a dam. You know, they, they just, you see this all around, you know, trees grow and bees collect pollen and, and, and the world is, is very orderly, you know, and so things are just kind of following these certain rules and, you know, the, the divine order is kind of carried out quite nicely. Uh, but then you get to humans, okay? So humans are a little more complicated. <laughs> so the next slide says, now among all others, the rational creature is subject to divine providence in the most excellent way insofar as it partakes of a share of providence by being provident both for itself and for others. Wherefore, it has a share of the eternal reason whereby it has a natural inclination to its proper act and end. And this participation of the eternal law in the rational creature is called the natural law. So the beaver building the dam is not natural law because it's not a rational creature. The, the bird building a nest is not the natural law because it's not a rational creature. But when we see that child or the hitchhiker, or we see something where we just kind of get this impulse that, I, 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 you know, this didn't come from me, but I just kind of know what to do here. That would be the natural law. And then uh, one more slide here. The next one says, hence the psalmist, after saying, offer up the sacrifice of justice, as though someone asked what the works of justice are, adds, many say, who show us good things? In answer to which question, he says, The light of thy countenance, O Lord, is signed upon us, thus implying that the light of natural reason, whereby we discern what is good and what is evil, which is the function of the natural law, is nothing else than an imprint on us of the divine light. It is therefore evident that the natural law is nothing else than the rational creature's participation of the eternal law. So this is why, okay, so it's, it's an, imprint, an imprint of the divine law on the rational creature knowing what to do. And so this is where I think we can get into some more of the kind of cultural issues of the day and just say, have we totally lost a sense of the natural law? And I'll give you four examples, and uh, they're all really controversial in our culture today. And, you know, you, you certainly don't talk about these things in polite company. But do we naturally know that marriage is between a man and a woman? Uh, I, I, I would say yes, but the culture is so twisted, and the culture has brainwashed us, and the media has brainwashed us that love is love, and you know you love who you want to love. But is that a violation of natural law? I, I would argue that that it is. Yeah, it is. It is. That's an, it's, it, it's just it, it's imprinted on us. We know this is true. We know that this is how procreation happens. We know that. You know, one man marrying, you know, three women just can't, would not work out. It's just kind of a, a formula for disaster. A man can't marry a man. A woman can't marry a woman. It's natural law. But it's, it's dead in our culture today. People have ignored it. Uh, but I would say for the same reason people ignore, you know, the, the homeless person. Or they, it's like yeah. the, the impulse is there. They know it's right. But there's, there's so much, you know, I can't, can't talk about that because— that that would offend somebody, and so I'm just whatever. I'm just gonna go. It's actually real quick interesting. Um, you're talking about uh, marriage and the natural law. There are actually lots of animals that um will mate for life. Yeah, um, and yeah. geese actually will die of sadness sometimes mm. if their spouse, you know, spouse wow. dies <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're right. That I remember when I was a kid, my parents got this uh, series of books called character sketches, and all and everything was it was all about lessons that we can learn from animals it's almost like <laughs> kind of a way a day you know in a sense but it was that kind of stuff yeah it's uh <clears throat> yeah but then there's also weird stuff in nature like the black widow female after she mates with a man you know what she does she eats she, the... she, she eats him yeah she kills him and 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 then uh th th there's like like i used to have a, a fish aquarium in, at my house you may know about this because you're uh and we had got we had uh guppies <clears throat> guppies are live birth fish, right? So you get this female that, you know, blows up and, and then 
she has the she has the babies, and what do all the other guppies do? They go and eat them. They all try to eat, and even even mm-hmm. she will start going yeah. after them. Yep. So you have Actually, to you have to put this moss stuff yeah. up on the top of your aquarium <laughs> where the little babies have to hide yep. in order to escape all the other stupid fish that yep. I mean, that, that goes. I had a pretty sad experience with this. It's very just sad <laughs> with but African cichlids. They do yeah, the same, they do the same thing. thing. Yeah, and uh, with betas. Yeah. Um, the the female actually is in a hypnotic state when she lays the eggs because if she was awake, she eats them. As soon as she wakes up, she goes on trying to eat them, and the male has to save them before. Oh my god! Before yeah. she eats them. Oh, maybe, maybe they, you know, God has imprinted in nature some like crazy stuff, to, so that we like say, "Whoa, that's weird. I don't want to do that." <laughs> yeah, you know, like like, like the black widow. That that's crazy. It's a, again, it's like one of those things where we can learn things from animals, but we also need to remember we are not like them. Exactly, yeah. we are ways. separate. We have yes. to end apart. <clears throat> yeah, and then the creatures that do mate for life. That's uh, they're the noble animals. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's pretty interesting as well. All right, if you're watching out there, uh, we know you're out there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we know, yeah. that's, that's an inside joke. See, uh, happy God. Halloween! Do, do you there know you the, the? Do you know the? You, we know you're out there joke. Do you know what that's all about? I mean, that no, just... it's an actual thing that okay. they just said yeah. on the air. Oh, yeah. no, during our shurathons. Uh, I got oh, oh yeah, 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 I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah. you heard about that. Uh, <laughs> Toya <laughs> called me on it because I, I would when we're calling for people to call in with donations. I, I used to say, "Hey, we know you're out there." You know, <laughs> just in the sense that. And, you know, because I, I know, <laughs> yeah. you know I, I know there's people that are listening on the radio, and so this one's a little bit more absolute because we know more of a number. You know, it's yeah. not a huge number, but we know that there are some people watching. Uh, so uh, we'd love to get your comments and your thoughts on this. I think it's a pretty provocative topic. You know, mm-hmm. is the natural law dead, uh, or have we killed it? Just like Nietzsche said, we killed God. Are we are we trying to extinguish that natural law so that? Our very instincts of what we know is true, what we know is right, we're ignoring. And what does that do to a person? Where you're living, you're living a lie. Remember, we did the the, the show on. Uh-huh. Are oh, you, yeah. you ever allowed to lie? Yeah. How many of us live lies? I mean, somebody says something like totally crazy uh, about abortion or marriage, and you're just kind of like, I don't, I don't want to deal with this. I'm not going to get into a fight with this person. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose my, my place, you know? I think it happens all the time. I mean, look at, look at the politicians who have done an about uh, 180, 180 yeah. on abortion. Our, our current president used to be pro-life. Oh, he used to be pro-life? Uh, oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, every, every, every one of the Democrats uh, that, that yeah. I mean, I, I, I bet you, 40, you know, 30, 40 years ago, President Biden's been in office, I mean, been in politics for a long time. Uh, Jesse, I mean, all, all these, all, you know, Jesse Jackson used to be pro-life. Uh, the Kennedys used to be pro-life. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it just, it's crazy. As soon as the political uh, tide turn, I mean, the, the cultural tide turn, they changed on something so fundamental as, as, as abortion. But anyways, I digress a little bit, but not really, because the next one I want to bring up is a baby in the womb. And uh, baby. it's kind of, it, it's, uh, and then just to kind of use an, an example, uh, like we were a few years ago, my daughters found a little baby squirrel that had fallen out of. No. Uh, do squirrels have nests? Yeah, uh, like in trees. Uh-huh. Okay, so They're this little like squirrel that. fell out and it hit the sidewalk, mm. and it was tiny. You know, maybe maybe two inches, you know, two two three inches long, and you know, it, it doesn't have much fur. It's just like this little little pinky thing. And they brought it in, and of course, we went out of our way. I mean, we, we were trying to find a way to, to save it, and we found out that there was this squirrel man in our neighborhood who, <laughs> who, who uh, tried to, re, you know, he had, he had like a house full of like 20 squirrels. I mean, seriously, he had like oh, these cages, and we found him. <laughs> you find wow. that very funny, don't you, Sissel? So. Squirrel man. Uh, <laughs> no, and I mean, he, he was a guy that that was his hobby. I mean, God had placed that wow, on. That's- Crazy. Yeah, so we went over to his house, and he had a whole room full of all these squirrels of different ages, and what? we we named him Willie, not the man, the, the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Willie the squirrel man. <laughs> we we, we Willie, decided to yeah, name him. Yeah, we, we, can't, we can't name the guy. I mean, I think his parents did that already. But So so my, my point is, is, I think, okay, so the every single human person sees a, a, a little baby squirrel who has fallen out of a tree— they, have, they probably have one of two instincts. They're either going to kill it to put it out of its misery or else they're going to try to save it. Or, I mean, they might walk by, but that's, that they, you know, I don't know, that's kind of heartless. But I think yeah. they at least would have some impulse, don't you think? Yeah, there's, oh, some, yeah. there's something oh, moving yeah. inside Absolutely. them. I took care of a, a 
little nest of baby mice that I found once. I accidentally destroyed their nest, so I took care of them for a while. But they, they wound up dying because, you know, they were like these tiny, tiny little mice. But I had them for about a week. Oh, the, oh the little tiny ones. Yeah. Okay. I took them to school with me. I had them in my little pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that, this reminds me of like of mice and men. Uh, yeah. Remember that guy that yeah. walked around with a, like a, a mouse in his pocket? Mm-hmm. You remember no, that? Like Ratatouille. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, anyways, so the the point is, is that every every person when they see this image of a of an innocent baby inside the womb, you can see its head, you can see its body. It's 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 a living living uh, you know human being. Natural law tells us we got to protect it, right? We got we got to protect it. And so uh, that's, uh, that's another one. Uh, all right, getting more controversial. Mm-hmm. What about this whole, you know, this is a, a sign on a bathroom, you know, female identifying and non-binary. I, I saw something the other day that, you know, the, the, uh, the, the medical community is now, when they're talking about pregnant, they, they don't say pregnant women any oh, longer. Oh, it's pregnant person, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, pregnant like person. I, I heard Biden, he calls them birthing persons. <laughs> that was really disturbing. And I heard one guy said uterus havers. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck, man? Hi, hey, I like... That that's... sounds like the disdainful uterus <clears throat> yeah, havers. Yeah, uterus havers. <laughs> I'm sure all the women in the world are really appreciating this. <laughs> yeah, I thank so, you. I'm now a birthing person. Yeah, but, but no, it, a uterus have her. But but but, but, it, but this the whole point is it's crazy and it, it like what is going on and do we need to have a, a national discussion about the natural law? Do we need to ask yes. everybody to tune in to back to the father to talk about <laughs> the, the, the the facts whole nation. Uh, and call in eight seven 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 five seven nine four two four. All right. President Biden, please call him. I could talk with oh, you. Oh, wouldn't that just be amazing? That would be. Uh, so no, I, um, <clears throat> I, I think it's, um, it's sad. But uh, the last one, now this one, this one's probably if there is any of these that that have a little bit of a stretch, it would be this one. But I want to go ahead and bring it up anyways, okay? Uh, to, because we're we're not we're not shying from contro- on, we're not on. shying from controversy this here. Is but doing a couple different jobs over okay, here. Okay, so so okay, so I, I think I, I would say that. Human beings have a natural desire f- to be free. Yeah. A natural desire for autonomy. A natural desire to, um, you know, make make their own decisions, have free will, that kind of thing. So when a government comes down in a, even in a crisis and says you can't leave your house, kind of like who we talk, you know, the, the the Australian folks that we talk to, when you're you're limiting mobility, uh, you're 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 telling people what to do. I think there's in our culture today an aspect of a of a lack of natural law, and I think that's why a lot of people are reacting to this. <clears throat> you, you know, there's really think about it. Last year there was lockdowns in America and a lot, in, uh, pretty much across the whole country, right? Mm-hmm. Even though this year there were more deaths from COVID than than there were last year, there aren't there aren't really any lockdowns mm-hmm. because I think they did it and they realized so many people hated it so much more harm than good yeah so much more harm than good and it caused so much depression so much you know domestic you know problems so you know divorce and suicide and an increase in all the bad stuff and pornography and everything that i think they they, they didn't say it this way but i think they said you know what we violated natural law <laughs> okay <laughs> because we watched Can you imagine by- like a press person from the white house coming out and saying we violated <laughs> yeah. natural but law do you think that you <laughs> yeah but um Anyways, I think, uh, I don't know, I, I, there's, there's got to be other examples, but it's something that the reason I said is natural law dead is that I think for the most part from a practical, applicable situation in our country, in our world today, it, it's, 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 been, it's, it's been killed in the way that Nietzsche wanted to kill God. It's mm-hmm. that it's no longer relevant, it's no longer anything we do, but it can't die because it's, it's inherent in the human person. Kind of like saying, is the soul of the human person dead? Well, it can't yeah. die because a human person has a soul. A human person has natural law. It's kind of built into us. The eternal law is real. The natural law is real. But then the application of it would be uh, the, uh, the human law. All right. So uh, that's actually <clears throat> all I have as far as uh, content. And so we'd love, uh, has anybody commented? 
Is, no. is, is we know you're out there. Okay, we know you're out there. <laughs> to be fair comments. on YouTube because we have. I just kind of real quick just mention about our new YouTube channel just so everyone yeah. knows about it. Uh, I'm pretty sure on our YouTube it's just you, Jonathan, and I on it. Oh, but okay. <laughs> <just> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the three people watching. Okay. Um, you, yeah. We're our biggest fans. Yeah, yeah. Woo woo. Uh, but we do have a special YouTube channel now for Back to the Father. I think we'll continue going on GRN Online, uh, the GRN Online uh, YouTube channel for a while too. Wait, I didn't know we had a YouTube channel. Yeah, we. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no one told me. This is isn't, why I'm making that announcement. Is, isn't he on it? Yeah. He said he was on he's, it. How does he I not he know? Was. Never mind. He's not. Maybe there is someone out there. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, Pressure. One, one person. Pressure on that person. Oh, I'm so I sorry. I called you out. No. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we just ruined I, this for you. <laughs> I'm trying to do serious housekeeping that, that things for the show. That one person is like, oh gosh, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> They've pinpointed me. Fantastic. That could be David L. Gray. He subscribed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and he always says good stuff about this he show. Does, he and does. And we never talk about his David, show. David, is that you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in to David L. Gray, Wednesdays, 4, 4 o'clock Central. On okay. all across the Guadalupe Radio Network and on our social media feeds. But recently, and it's happened a few times, where our GRN YouTube channel has gotten strikes and we're close to having yeah. it being shut oh, down entirely. Oh, you think so this show could get me any strikes? Possibly. I mean, oh, we, yeah. We, we, we kind of <laughs> we went there. We did kind of go there. But yeah. anyhow, they got another strike, so that's why we haven't been streaming onto that YouTube uh, channel. But we'll probably, when we have that one open up again, we'll continue on both YouTube channels. But you might want to subscribe to this one in case we lose the other one. Um, and you can get just more fo- you know, focused on just Back to the Father shows. And I hope to upload all of our old shows on here as well. So Back to the Father on YouTube. I'm going to post a link in our Facebook group because... Uh, I will say, finding it, there's more than one channel called Back to the Father, and ours is buried oh, is somewhere right? way down there. Could you so. email me the link, actually? Ours is not, that'd be great. not the most viewed Back to the Father. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yet. Well, we got to change that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, I'm sorry. I just want to <clears> little they, housekeeper they, thing. And also, always sign up to our email list so you can stay up to date, and I'll post the link for that as well. All right. Very good. So, uh, and the other good thing about being on social media is you, you're not on any kind of set time frame. I do, I do say a lot of people watch this as a recorded. Uh, so, you know, if you're watching it recorded, we'd love for you to join us live every Friday, 2 o'clock Central. And so if you're seeing this and it's on a recorded basis, it's a lot more fun if you watch it live. Because then you can comment, you can call in and, and that kind of stuff. So if you're watching it recorded, that's fine. Uh, if you're, gosh, if you're watching a recorded and you're still watching, God bless you, because we're, uh, you know, 40, 42 minutes into the show, you know, mm, yes. that's, uh, people have yeah. short attention spans, but, uh, <clears throat> all right. Any other comments about, uh, natural law? Did, uh, did this make sense? Does yeah. Thomas's teaching kind of shed new light on it? Uh, I don't know. Anything, anything? Yeah, I think it, I think it does, um. It's something that I feel like, yeah, as a culture, we're like getting further and further away from. We're all like blessed to have been raised Christian. And so it's like something that's always in the forefront of our mind. But if you think about it, I think the average person you talk to, they might, once you start talking about it, they might be like, oh, yeah, I get that kind of. But it's not something that the culture is thinking about, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing I think is ridiculous is that it's not inherently, uh, you know, a religious or Christian concept. Because whenever I talk with people, uh, you know, non-Christians, just sort of secular people about it, they're like, oh, no, don't bring your religious, you know, whatever into this. But the natural law isn't really, you know, inherently religious. It's just don't kill people, you know, it's kind of <laughs> basic human reason. Yeah, and I, and I always try to, you know, in a, in a very Thomistic fashion, get into the mind of the other side. And you take a, a politician, you know, I won't name any names, although I did earlier in the show, but uh, <laughs> let's just take a, a Catholic politician who is very, very pro-abortion. And, <clears throat> but if, if natural law is instilled in this person, and I know it is, they know that abortion is wrong. But then there's something that's overpowering that, you know, the, the need for power, the need for you know, remaining in good graces with mm-hmm. maybe, you know, some of your donor donors like Planned Parenthood. So <clears throat> basically natural law is here and it's telling you protect the life of the unborn and that that's what's instilled in this person's heart. But there's clearly something more powerful that's pushing him in the other direction. And so it's kind of like that battle going on. But that's when where divine law comes in because that's where the you and I and church leaders and the Pope and everybody else has to remind a person of the divine law saying to you, oh, and by the way, there's a hell uh, and there's a heaven and you will be judged at the end of your life because that's divine law. That's not natural law. We don't just naturally know. We may have a sense that, 
you know, since I have free will, maybe there's some kind of judgment coming at the end of my life, but the, the, the particulars of it are kind of fuzzy. But that's where divine law comes in and people being reminded of that because that might that, that might uh, move the needle a little bit with people who are yeah. pro-abortion. And so, that, and of course, then human law. Human law results from people ignoring natural law. I mean, bad laws do. Mm. And so, I don't know, it all ties together. <clears throat> and um, But uh, any, anyways. I have uh, updates from the, the, the Facebook feeds and the YouTube okay. feeds. First off, YouTube, we, are down to, we went down to two people watching, so we did oh, scare we scared someone away. Oh, we scared them away. Other than us? Oh. Yeah, no, no, two people watching, and then it went back up to three, so I was like, we did scare someone away. <laughs> oh, no. Also, Eric on Facebook was commenting, uh, and he, uh, he said he watches uh, uh, CDT every morning, so oh, or good. in the mornings, and he knew that they were on a two-week ban as well, and he said he's going to subscribe and join our email list, so that's nice. All right. Thank you, Eric. And uh, he says, God bless you guys and gals for the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so thanks, Eric. And I only, I not only listened to yeah, Kathy Drive Time today. You participated and promoted us today. I imagine that. I got a text from Joe McLean because, you know, Adrian uh, Fonseca is a big Thomist. You know, he loves St. Thomas Aquinas. He's, you know, hosted this show one time before. And uh, they were they were debating something. I wasn't listening at the time, but I'm dropping my kids off at school. And 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 Jonathan, you're not aware of this. In fact, I don't even think I told you what the what the argument was. I actually watched it, so I oh, know it. Oh, yeah. so you know what on monarchy? Okay. No, no, yeah. one on monarchy. So it was so, so, on so, celestial beings. <coughs> yeah, and so humans. Did you and hear oh. my comments and all yeah, that? Yeah, okay. I heard it. Actually, do you know a real random side tangent? You got called, but I think you got called because. Um, our friend Buddy in the comments said that you should call uh, Dave Palmer. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, so. okay. Oh, so I was wondering. Cause so I get a text from Joe McLean this morning at 745. I'm dropping the girls off at school. I'm in a, I'm not in a school zone, but I'm like at a school. So yeah. I really shouldn't be on the phone. And I won't tell you whether or not I, I got on the phone or not. <laughs> <clears throat> but he said, you want to be on the show? We're having a optimistic discussion. I said, well, of course. And so I get on and I, I, I got to say, like I said on, on the show, I need another hour of sleep to figure out <laughs> right. what what's going on. And uh, but it, 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 I didn't quite understand the question. It had something to do with patron saints, and then Joe started talking about <clears throat> whether, like, he kept saying like the human beings in heaven awaiting their body. Remember that they had a disagreement on what what when you are dead waiting in heaven for to be yeah joined with your body like you know when Jesus comes again sort of thing, what are you considered? Yeah. And it was like this thing of like, and Joe was saying humans, and Adrian was saying no, and you came in and you were like... I sided with Adrian. You sided with Adrian, yeah, which Joe would... did not appreciate. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, yeah, but you know, the, the truth hurts, doesn't yeah, it? Because yeah. well, a human <laughs> is the body and the soul together. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. exactly it's a, what... It's a composite, yeah. And, yeah. And, and that's why, uh, and, I, and I always, I, I think this is a great example, that's why corpses and ghosts creep us out. You know, you oh, think yeah. about a ghost they're because they're not natural. Right. It's it's not a ghost it's not is supposed to be a ghost is not. I mean, a, a, a separated soul. Yeah, you know, like if we if 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 we how somehow got word that let's just say somebody who we know who has passed away, my my grandfather, and and we know that that separated soul is in this room right now, that'd be a little creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, uh, and it, at the same time, if we said, oh, by the way, there's a corpse in the corner of the room there. That's creepy. But if your granddad was here, that'd be cool. Just hi. Uh, <laughs> but you mean as like a composite? Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh yeah, my grandfather. But yeah, but yeah, then that's that's we don't like corpses. I mean, that's like creepy stuff you see around this. Are your are your are your neighbors or are you guys decorating your house uh, for Halloween? A little bit. Yeah. For creepy stuff. Something, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We we we've got neighbors. They're like competing with each other oh, for dear. for creepiness. Oh yeah, we we have that going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's always entertaining. Yeah. And I, you know, we do a lot more pumpkins <laughs> and more like cheesy creepy if that makes sense you know, like more- <laughs> i just have a pirate flag flying outside that's pretty much all we do yeah our neighbors and i, and I love our neighbors and they're good people and uh, not saying anything bad about them that you that you even know who they are but uh they, they got some stuff that that's a little a, a little a, a little creepy creepy a little too far. yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, going too far but they're such nice people that i know they don't mean it but we don't do anything you know i, mm-hmm. I, always, I tell my kids i said i want to like hang like like angels and saints, you know. So rather than Halloween, more like well, like the fair, communion of saints, you know. If you like put up statues representing saints and how they are martyred. <laughs> oh, yeah. there you, know, you go. That, that's that's pretty. It's still kind of fall, creepy. Falls yeah. in like the Halloween. Who was the saint? Yeah. Yeah. Halloween Blade or whatever, or he had his oh, skin. Oh, so, oh, that, oh that was that? Uh, was this not Sebastian? Was no, the head of the Sebastian? I think it was, no, it was Lawrence. Yeah. No, oh, no, Saint Lawrence was grilled. Oh yeah, yeah. What'd you say? He was. He was flayed. 
Yeah, see, and that same thing. That's the best. No, oh, is that the no, one that like, we get your he, skin he peeled off? Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Um, so just get like a, a big picture of that and, and like hang it outside your your door. Yeah, and then scare the kids away. Yeah, yeah. But I told you about the time my my daughter uh, dressed up like Saint Lucy, and yeah. she has the plate with the eyeballs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so she went around trick or treating, and she's holding a plate with eyeballs on it. And she got bad guys. How many people asked you about the eyeball plate? Nobody. <laughs> And I was like, really? I feel like people are just, they can't. They just want they, candy. They, they think they can't. They're yeah. like, I can't keep up with all the new trends. They're like, what is this costume? We don't <laughs> <Right>. know. <laughs> yeah, this is just. just like some new kids show we don't something. know about. <laughs> yeah. I, I always ask people, hey, what are you? What yeah, are you? Yeah, I want to know. And they're, they're like, they just, yeah. I love yeah. when they tell me and I just sit there going, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. I, yeah. I'm just going to answer the door as a crusader, so. That's my plan. <laughs> I think my, we wanted to do something fun in our neighborhood. We are, we're mostly like an older uh, neighborhood. We don't have that many kids, but I want to do something fun. For you have an old neighborhood with no with that many kids. Yeah, generally. Well, it's not that we, on, especially on our end of the neighborhood, it's a lot of grandma and grandpas. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some young kids. Like we have young kids next door to us, and then we have like some teenagers on the other side. But the everyone else around us is retired. Yeah, and has you know. Yeah, just so not as many. Do you have a neighborhood the that, uh, like, uh, we, we, I mean, we're not, like, in a rich neighborhood, but we, we're in a neighborhood that a lot of people give out candy, so yeah. we'll have, like, the neighboring, you know, kid, like, the kids from the apartments yeah. or oh, something yeah. will come in, because you, you recognize that they're not from the neighborhood, or they're, you know, God, we, I live in a cul-de-sac, so I know everybody in our neighbor in our, 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 our particular street. All right, boy, we sure did get off on a different we topic, did. didn't we? But that's, <laughs> yeah. okay, that's okay. It all started with Joe and Adrian calling me to be on their show, and we never still yet talked about what that topic was. I mean, directly, did we? Uh, well, I mean, the celestial. Oh yeah, we well, did. We, a little yeah, bit. yeah, we did. We talked yeah. about what your thoughts were. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they were talking about celestial. Uh, was it beings? What like Cthulhu? That kind of thing. Yeah, celestial yeah. beings. Yeah, celestial what's, beings. It's okay, terrible. I started, what's that? What's that mean? Like, is it like not to, to get like, us? Yeah, and I and I said, topic, well, but... I said, couldn't I couldn't the Holy Spirit be a celestial being? I mean, doesn't the celestial just mean heavenly? Uh, or Wait, is or he, is he talking about like space celestial or like heaven or yeah I mean they I see it, it was really convoluted and uh, to kind of get thrown tossed into it <laughs> yeah. you know like <laughs> at yeah, but it was it was interesting though but I think I think Cecil actually explained it pretty well it was mm-hmm. just about whether or not the person in heaven awaiting the body oh, is, okay. is a is a human that was being. like the the general crux yeah. of it there was a lot more you know nuanced. This yeah, nuance, and then they kept talking it. about it. After I get off, they're talking about the age of a person, yeah. like their body. Uh, <laughs> and somebody said, "We're all going to be a baby, like children in heaven." Uh, oh, uh, but I, but I, Aquinas I said we that. would be at the perfect physical state. And yeah, like, the, the age of Christ. That's what I always thought. Yeah, like thirty-three. Like when is your like you're 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 still on your way to your best yeah. physical state, and Sissel might be as well. Uh, but I'm like long past it. Eric you know? is asking, I wonder if the X File theme song was being played during that conversation you had yeah. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that'd be yeah. good. That'd be All good. Right. All right. So, are we ready to move on to yes, trivia? We are. Okay, I, I got, so. I got, I got a doozy here. for you guys All today. Right. So, okay. All right. Yes, it's that time. Whoop, are we? No, there we go. <laughs> it's that time of the there show we where we give Dave too much to think about, and he gives it right back. All right. Thank you, Diane. Diane's been busy on the, the phone. about that intro is I could record it, but it's much more entertaining messing up yeah. every time. Yeah, it makes, yeah, it makes for some, some fun hijinks. Okay, so uh, Jonathan, you're, you're, you're good? You got something? I got something, yeah. Okay, so, so you got something? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, who would like to go first? Uh, you want me to go first to get the go for ridiculous it. stuff? Yes. All right, so this is uh, <laughs> last minute, of course, as usual. Oh, dear. Um, I actually just recently heard about this uh, in youth group. <laughs> Um, so I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Cause so okay, which prophet in the Old Testament witnessed the resurrection of like a thousand skeletons? Oh, Ezekiel. Uh, yeah, is that the dry bones? Ezekiel yeah, yeah, them no, dry bones. Yeah, it's <laughs> a song. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Protestant. I, 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 yeah. Protestant. <laughs> I, I, I've never heard of that before. I, How I, do you I, never? That. Protestantism. Uh, I think it's funny how you all sometimes, and maybe I'm guilty of this. You ask a question that you think like we wouldn't know, but it's actually common knowledge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, okay. I know if that's common knowledge, but the, if it wasn't for that, yeah, the song, and that's a yeah. pretty interesting story. But yeah, because uh, I, 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 I never heard about it, and I thought it was just, it's, it's the coolest thing. It I is thought. the coolest yeah. thing, honestly. I mean, like the, the way they described how like the the flesh like erupted and flowed over yeah. the bones. It just, but it yeah. also ties into the question, the, the, what we were just saying a moment ago about body and soul. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, body, yeah. yeah, Oh, there you go. That's what I was doing. Yeah, <laughs> all along. <laughs> I, can, can I just 
just say real quick that every week Jonathan's like, I don't have a question, yeah. but he always comes up with one. The thing is, is that I just stay silent. Most of the time I haven't figured out my question until about 10 minutes before we oh, do it. Oh, there. Is that right? Yeah. Before the show starts? No, before, or, during the show. Do you find it during the show? I'm busy up until the moment we start the show. I, I find it or I just think of one or something like that. And sometimes I have notes from old ones. I just, <clears throat> okay. I smoothly, you'll, so you'll never know if I've actually had it for a while or right, not. Right, right. And I and I tend to show mine yeah, to yeah, people, yeah. and See, so I just prefer to be honest. Okay, <laughs> I was, that's, no that's my said, policy. Dave said, "Do you no, have don't a question?" Don't and I'm like, said, no. "Yes, <laughs> yeah. I will have a question, or I have, have I do have one by that point." Um, do you mind if I go next because I think uh, mine, uh, mine's also an Old Testament. But you're question. not going to have us like list the Old Testament books. One day I will, but not today. Okay, because okay. so we did so well with the New uh, Testament. I was thinking about the story of Daniel in the Old Testament. Okay. And he has three friends who are thrown into an inferno. Do you remember the names? Can you name <laughs> oh, the names? Oh, yes. Of this? Um, Can you name any of them, Jonathan? Jacob. No. No, no, they're crazy names. Yeah, I like oh, okay. uh, I think it was a classic um, Bible name. It's like Athaniel or. Um, no. Nope. One starts with a J. Uh, uh, no, wait, wait. No, uh, they do not. no, no. no. Shalinar. Sh- 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 no, it's close. You got the shish right. Shabil Bar. No, that's the uh, province. Oh, oh, and, uh, Do you want me to? And, and that. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Do you need me to say it for you? Uh, um, for wait, that first oh, one? Oh, 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 you know, I, I, I'm gonna know these. I'm yeah, gonna kick as myself. Soon as, I, as soon as I say them, I feel like everyone's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I uh, definitely heard that." Uh, yeah. Okay. Say one. Shadrach. Shadrach. Sh- me, me, sack. Yes. And Abednego. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Meshach. See, all I needed was one. Shadrach, me, and Abednego. Yeah. There uh, you go. Now, as a secondary question, maybe, maybe, maybe Jonathan will have a chance at this one. Do, who was the king of Babylon? What was the name of the king of Babylon that threw them in there? Nebuchadnezzar. Dave, you're Is that you? right? Yes. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar the second. Did you know that one? Okay. Uh, on that. I, 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 okay. I know it, but I don't think I would have gotten it. Like when he said, it, "I was like, okay, yeah, yeah." Okay, I mean, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna ask you a question, and this is a list of ten things, okay. and I'm gonna give each of you a chance to. Uh, you, 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 I want to see if you can get, um, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, uh, six right before you get three wrong. <laughs> it's oddly specific. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Let's go. Okay. Uh, the countries in the world Ooh. with the most Catholics. Poland. But no, whoa, no, no, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you, you guys have to do this together. Okay, this is a team okay. effort. So, but I mean, you can you can shout it out. <laughs> okay, so they're, 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 I have the top ten in order. Okay. Okay. It's, it's but remember, you got to get six right before you get three wrong. Okay. Okay. okay, so it's, what's what's your first answer? Poland. First? Brazil. Okay, well, hold on. Okay, so <laughs> we so, can't so, have to say you, one okay, of You got time. Poland. Okay, Diane, that's correct. Poland's Woo! correct. Poland's number eight, and Brazil's number one. Brazil's number one. Oh yes. yeah. Okay. Uh, what? Yeah, it's South America. Mexico's number two. Oh, sweet. Oh, my. All right. So you got uh, three. Paraguay. Dude. <laughs> what? Consult with okay, me. So <laughs> you got one, one, one whammy. Okay. All right, so all right. you got three right and then one oh. wrong. Okay. okay so remember, you got to get What's, six right before. What other European countries? Oh, no, it, it, it's Ar- South America. Argentina? South America. Is, Argentina? Is, is, no, South America. Oh, yeah. yeah. Argentina's yeah, yeah. in South America. <laughs> okay. No, Argentina is not right. Well, I didn't. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. okay, the drama. Uh, okay, you got three right, two wrong. I, so it's like clusters no. around Brazil. That's all I know because I know Brazil's the most, and then I don't know though. Hold on, Bolivia. Uh, Would Bolivia? Don't, don't don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I I won't say, count it until you say this is our answer. Yes. Oh, okay, oh, so there's, um, feel free to discuss. Uh, there's a uh, somewhere in Asia, not not like like a. Uh, I know there's an Asian country that's really let me get this that's uh that's very Catholic. Um, um I don't know which one you're thinking of. I it, it, this is definitely not gonna be on the list, but out of Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam? Ooh. Oh no no uh, um it's not Asian uh, the Philippines. Philippines? Yeah, they're very Did Catholic. You, oh that's right, they are very Catholic. I'm gonna say Philippines. We'll say Philippines. Number three. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, so you Shout can... out to Rowena Ignacio. <laughs> okay, you got four right, two wrong, so <laughs> You cannot, you cannot afford to no, get another one wrong. I want to say America, but I, don't, I just don't. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think. I doubt it. We're too Protestant. Yeah. Uh, top, yeah top ten. You've got you've got the first three: oh, Brazil, Ireland. Brazil, oh. Mexico, and the Philippines. Maybe, maybe. And you got Poland, which is number eight. I feel like there's other countries in Central Europe yeah, that are the smaller true. ones, you know, because um, it's a percentage. Austria? They're pretty Catholic. It's, Austria might be Austria, Austria or like a. What do we think between Austria and Ireland? Which one do we think is more? 
probably Ireland. I wouldn't be uh, mad if someone wanted to comment their thoughts. That's true. <laughs> you wouldn't be mad. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how nice of you, Cecil. So, so, uh, that is so nice of you uh, to I, not I, be mad think... if somebody wants to. <laughs> oh, uh, I love uh, that. No, that would be. Uh, well, I, I want you all to get the next one right Wait, so bad. So then it'll be like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Do you want to give us a hint then so that we can go get something? I think I think let's go with Ireland. Have we mentioned one? Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. You okay? Met, you, Eric you... is saying Ireland. Yeah, that's oh, let's yeah. go with okay. It. okay. So Ireland. you're going uh... Ireland. Still Ireland. No, no. no. I, you got to remember, Ireland's a tiny country. Yeah, but oh, except uh, for I, Ireland, I, I, the whole you know the whole country of Ireland wait, only wait, has wait, like wait, six. Wait, wait, six wait, wait, hold, hold, we, we uh, misinterpreted this question. Whole, I thought we were going by uh, just the general percentage of, of, the of the country. No, no the numbers. Population. Numbers. Oh, okay, man. so you want to erase that one? Yeah, that's erase. Uh, yeah. Okay, no, no, sheer numbers. Oh. The, okay, just as a matter of fact, there's more people in the DFW Metroplex than the whole country of Ireland. Take that, Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Take that island. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you always shoot. talk to me, Lucky Charles. We're, we're thinking of, okay, think so, of a bigger country. Okay, so Europe is okay, and, and Eric, nothing. I mean, okay, um, they have like a tiny population. So, no okay, offense, Europe. So, but. <laughs> no offense, the whole continent just got offended <laughs> by you. Good job. Okay, man. so um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised you. Is there one? Is there a really obvious one we haven't gotten? Well, I, I to me it seems kind of obvious. Oh, oh but, uh, somewhere in Africa. Mm, Where? There's a lot of African countries. <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> Dian, Dian's just willy nilly doing yes. bomb sounds. Sugar happy, you know. Um, uh, I think you got a, you got about you got to think about countries oh, that oh, have a lot Ukraine. of people. Ukraine, trust me. Ooh. Because they had Tr the, the, the Ukrainian. See, the thing is, is every time I play a trivia game and someone says "trust me," every single <laughs> time they've been wrong. No, that so, triggers so you the, to not yeah. trust them. But the Ukrainian Catholic Church is the second largest right in the entire Catholic Church, and they All have right. so. We'll say that, but the bomb is for Jonathan. Okay, yeah. so um, is that your final answer? Uh, Ukraine. And believe me, I mean final answer. You're Ukraine. But, uh, yes. uh, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. no, no Ukraine. All right, what is the ones that we're missing? All right, so number one is Brazil. Number two is Mexico. Number three is the Philippines. Number four is the United States. Oh. See, we should have. 75 we, million we Catholics. I guess we, when we went back to the bigger we, thing. We, we, got, we got a lot That's of people. Yeah. Uh, number five is Italy. Why didn't you we didn't think, think of Italy? Didn't think about yeah. Italy? Uh, that's really bad. The home of Catholicism. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of. That's really kinda, bad. Uh, oh no. Number six is Colombia. Oh, that makes uh, sense. Yeah. Number seven. Oh, Spain is, probably. Number was on there. seven is France. I was thinking about France. Actually. Yeah, uh, I was sure though because I don't know. Number eight is Poland. Number nine is Spain. Spain. And uh, Spain. number ten is the Dominican Republic. Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, so yeah, but uh, um, but I knew Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In my head, so <laughs> <laughs> just to make me so, feel better. Uh, yeah, Brazil, 127 million. Mexico, 96 million. Philippines, 76. Uh, the U.S., 75 million. Wow. And then and then it drops uh, considerably after that. All right, good questions. Uh, thank you to our, our all, everybody who is watching this, either live or pre-recorded. Um, and God bless you. Have a great weekend. And don't forget, 5 o'clock tonight, Central Time, it's the 15th anniversary show for KTH 910 AM. We'll be back on social media. God bless you. Thanks for joining us for Back to the Father. And don't forget, the glory of God is the human person fully alive. If you have comments about the show, email Dave Palmer at grnonline.com.